Hello friends, welcome to Civil Procedure Code and the Limitation Act lectures. I am Marjina Sultana, an assistant professor from Interpersonal Law College, Greater Noida. In this video, we will study res sub judice under CPC. The doctrine of res sub judice means stay of suit. Section 10 of CPC deals with this doctrine which prevents the trial of a suit which is already pending in a court of competent jurisdiction. The rule is based on the public policy to restrict the chances of having two contradictory judgments by two courts of concurrent jurisdiction from simultaneously entertaining two parallel litigations. Before we discuss res sub judice in detail, Let's first understand its meaning. The Latin word res means matter in legal usage. It means every object of right that forms the subject matter in a particular case. And the term sub judice means under a judge or in other words under judicial consideration. So res sub judice means a matter under judicial consideration, a cause that is under trial or pending before a court or judge. Doctrine of res sub judice is exclusively dealt under section 10 of CPC which will be discussed in the next slide. Section 10 of CPC provides stay of suit that no court shall proceed with the trial of any suit in which the matter in issue is also directly and substantially in issue in a previously instituted suit between the same parties or between parties under whom they or any of them claim litigating under the same title where such suit is pending in the same or any other court in India having jurisdiction to grant the relief claimed or in any court beyond the limits of India established or continued by the central government and having like jurisdiction or before the Supreme Court. So this section prevents the trial of a suit which is already pending in a court of competent jurisdiction. The suit in this section is referring to the suit instituted in the civil code. So the doctrine of res sub judice cannot apply to proceedings of other nature instituted under any other statutes. According to this section, when the same parties file two or three cases in the same matter, the competent court has the power to stay proceedings of another court. Here, I have underlined the conditions required to apply Section 10. Let's discuss these essential conditions in the next slide so we can understand the section more clearly. There are six elements which are essential to invoke Section 10 of CPC. They are where the two suits are instituted. One that is previously instituted and another that is subsequently instituted. The second condition is where the matter in issue is same. Section 10 clearly states that the matter in issue in both the suits must be directly and substantially be the same. The issues of both the suits should be same to get the benefit of this principle. It is not sufficient if only one or two issues are common. Let's understand what is mean by the word matter directly and substantially in issue. Here, 
directly means immediately, that is without any intervention. And the word substantially implies essentially or materially. The third condition is where the parties in suits are same. The two suits should have the same parties or their representatives. The fourth condition is where the title of the suit is same. The title of both the suits for which the parties are litigating should also be same. The fifth condition is where the suit must be pending. The former suit must be pending in the court while the latter suit is instituted. The word pending is for the previously instituted suit where the final decision has not been arrived at. The sixth condition is where the suit is pending in a competent court. Section 10 specifies that the former suit must be pending before a court which is competent to carry out the trial. If the former suit is pending before an incompetent court, no legal effects can flow from it. The moment these conditions are satisfied, a court cannot proceed with the subsequently instituted suit since the provisions contained in this section are mandatory and the court cannot exercise its discretion. The stay can be of subsequent suit only, not of previously instituted suit. In the case of GC Care Center and the hospital versus OP Care Private Limited, it was held that the notable factor in rest of judice is only the subsequently instituted suit can be stayed and the previously instituted suit cannot be stayed. The rule of rest of judice is applicable to the trial of a suit and not to the institution of suit. The court has no power to bar the institution of a subsequent suit but can restrict its trial only. Section 10 is very explicit in its content and starts with the words, no court shall proceed with the trial of any suit. Thus, it is conclusively determined that it shall only apply to the trial and not to its other relevant proceedings. The order of stay can be made at any stage of the proceedings. However, if the court is satisfied with the fact that the subsequent suit can be decided purely on legal point, it is open for the court to decide in such a suit. In Nita versus Shiv Dayal Kapoor and others, it was held that the subsequent matter cannot be stayed if the conditions mentioned in section 10 are not fulfilled. In this case, the two courts which tried the same issues were not the courts having concurrent jurisdiction. Therefore, the proceedings in the subsequent court were not stayed. Res sub judice is also applicable to appeals and the revisions under the provisions of the code. The main purpose or the nexus behind section 10 is to bring an end to the litigation, to avoid harassment over the defendant, to avoid wasting the resources of the court, and to avoid delaying the court procedures. In the case of Guru Prasad vs. Bizi Kumar, it was held that the main aim of this section is to eliminate the outcome of the, con 
of the two contradictory verdicts for the same issue. But if the two suits are dealt conjointly by a particular court to deliver justice, then it would not be against this doctrine. In SBA Anamali Chetty v. B. A. Thornhill, it was observed that the main objective of this section is to prevent a person from taking multiple proceedings against another person in a same matter, thereby avoiding differences of decisions in each suit. It also protects the defendant from frivolous harassment. Therefore, the main objective is to avoid multiplicity of proceedings, minimize frivolous litigation, and unnecessary delay. Section 10 has an explanation clause that states that the pendency of a suit in a foreign court does not preclude the courts in India from trying a suit founded on the same cause of action. This clearly explains us that there is no limitation on the power of an Indian court to try a subsequently instituted suit if the previously instituted suit is pending in a foreign court. This also means that the cases can be carried on simultaneously in two courts. Exceptions to the doctrine of res sub judice is that it does not restrict the court to pass interlocutory order or any interim orders which include an injunction or stay on the suit, the appointment of receiver, etc. Some orders are passed without any proceedings of a trial. Thus, such orders cannot be taken up for stay based on this doctrine. There is also no stay of suits when the subsequent suit or the former suit is filed in a foreign court which is not established or under the, the control of the central government of India or Supreme Court of India. The test of applicability for Section 10 is whether the decision in a former given suit would operate as res judicata or decided case in the subsequent suit. If this happens, then the latter suit must be stayed. A civil court has an inherent power under Section 151 to stay the trial of a suit to achieve justice even where the provisions of Section 10 do not strictly apply. Additionally, courts can also consolidate different suits between the same parties in which the matter of issue is substantially the same. In Bokaro and the Rango Limited versus State of Bihar and the another, the matter in issue was regarding the ownership of a property. The court in this case used its power and consolidated different issues having same matter. So the power of courts to stay the trial under Section 151 is discretionary in nature. It can be exercised only when there is an abuse of process of court and if it defeats the ends of justice. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.